morning everyone it's your old pal scooter coming to you live from the granville guitars world headquarters here in lovely st petersburg florida today is uh, february 1st 2021 and today i'm going to speak to you very briefly about what is point to point that's a word that gets tossed around a lot by a lot of folks who probably kind of think they know what it means and it's sort of a watchword amongst builders and customers of guitar amplifiers I can't find my pointer stick so I'm gonna have to use a screwdriver um, this is a Magnavox custom 250 I believe the model number is Uh, yeah, it's a custom 250. This is point to point, otherwise known as a rat's nest, right here. This is what point to point is. What that means is that there are virtually no wires in here, except for transformers and pots and long runs. The components themselves make the connections with their component leads. Okay? You see all of this? No wires. This component's flying everywhere. Okay, there's a whole bunch of blue molded uh, Ajax caps in this thing too. Um, it's just getting general maintenance here. We're going to put a three-pronged power cord on it. Um, check all the tubes. I'm probably going to replace that big red uh, cardboard tube there. That is the bias supply cap, and I'm probably going to replace that. But as you can see, throughout the amplifier, there is no organized grouping of uh, uh, any kind of board that the components would mount to. Okay, no turret board, no eyelet board, nothing of that sort. This is point to point. Nothing else is point to point. All right, there are several construction styles where tube guitar amplifiers, vintage tube amplifiers are concerned. Okay, you have the the most basic is this, point to point, true point to point. Then you have turret or eyelet board. Um, marshals, particularly early marshals, were using a turret board construction. We're going to look at that here in a sec. I'll show you an example of that. Then later on, Marshalls in the early 70s went to a printed circuit board or PCB configuration. Does one sound better than the others? No. Electrons don't care. I've said this repeatedly in my shop. I've never said it in a video because I didn't want to get all opinionated and polarizing, but that is the truth. Electrons don't care. The designs differ in other ways that do make a difference. In other words, how all these components are sort of laying in here in the the point-to-point -point design at different angles and different, you know, uh, spacing to the chassis, all that stuff does have a slight effect on the tone of these amplifiers as opposed to something like a turret or eyelet board where they're all neatly laid out, you know, and evenly spaced amongst each other. Those kind of orientations do have a measurable, I think, effect on the tone. But in terms of just purely being point to point, is it better? No. And for a technician, particularly a technician who's trying to become a technician and can't read a schematic diagram, these can be very disheartening because you need to have a schematic in front of you. You need to have a voltometer in front of you so you can trace things properly or you will get lost because this is crazy. Um, those little uh, you see these in old Ampegs and Magnavoxes and, and Magnetones, rather. Um, these guys right here, these, these sort of square uh, bit of honey looking things. That is actually uh, multiple things. Um, those are early precursors of integrated circuits. They usually have resistors and caps in them. Not always, but a lot of times they do. And those guys are really hard to replace if they go bad. This guy here is very clean. This particular example of this amplifier is very clean. And, uh, you know, it's not going to need a whole bunch of work. I've already plugged it in, and it really does sound good. 
the uh, the famous magnetone vibrato works very very well on it um, so yeah this is point to point okay let's move on to an example of a different construction style okay what we have here is a Marshall design from the very early 70s late 60s this is a this particular amp is a Marshall popular uh, that's been quite frankly righteously messed with and it's in the shop to have it returned uh, and improved slightly we're actually going to up the power on it we're going to put a set of uh, uh, 18 watt transformers in it and do some modifications to it to make it a little bit more usable but all that aside you can see what we've got here this is a turret board construction this is the same construction style for all intents and purposes as the fender eyelet board construction style it's just that instead of a piece of flat work eyelet that that holds down close to the material we have a turret that actually comes up off the board slightly to suspend the components uh, in the air uh, when you suspend things like capacitors particularly tone caps and signal caps when you they're when they're suspended slightly in the air they all caps are slightly microphonic and th this behavior is, um, is sort of amplified when they're mounted up off the board a little bit more on, on a fender in, of, of this period, this particular period where they were using eyelet boards usually those components were down tight against the board and did not have quite that same uh, vibrational quality about them which may or may not have contributed any to the tone but it's, it's there uh, it's certainly there it's certainly measurable and you know uh, it's it's a difference but the main thing we want to focus on here is this different construction style this is not point to point this is a turret board and like I said I don't have an example of an eyelet board that I have open I can show you but chronologically this would have been next after the previous vi uh, clip that we looked at with uh, the uh, magnetone 250 uh, that was point to point. This is turret board. And again, uh, same, same basic idea as uh, eyelet board construction style. Uh, eyelet boards were typically mounted directly to the chassis with a, with a piece of, of vulcanized fiber board similar to this piece right here. This is similar to what Fender would have used. It's a vulcanized fiber board. And they would have one layer of this with all the components mounted on it with eyelets and another blank layer like this one underneath to keep everything from shorting out against the chassis and it was screwed directly to the chassis. On these Marshall designs, um, I can't see where they are, but it, ah, down here, if you look closely, you can see that it's mounted up off the board with screws and spacers. Again, that contributes some to tonality because your components are up in the air, they're away from the chassis physically, um, so that's going to contribute something to the tone overall. Um, let's have a quick peek at the final circuit type we're going to look at here. All right, this last design is PCB or printed circuit board. This happens to be an early 80s uh, JCM 800, uh, the 2203 100 watt version and uh, it's been monkeyed with. One of the reasons it's, it's in the shop is because we're going to return it to its former glory um, and undo some of the mod damage that's been done. But if we zoom in here and you can see the construction of this, all of these components are mounted down tight to the board and the connections are not made with wires, they're made with copper traces. In the case of this era, nice thick copper traces that don't stand any danger of uh, getting overheated if, if you have to replace things at any point. Um, later designs were a real problem. It's a serious problem on specifically modern fenders and, and other amplifiers. You have to be exceedingly gentle and careful when soldering and desoldering to those boards because their copper traces will lift very easily if you're not careful. Um, so anyway, um, again, is this better or worse? Well, some people will tell you that it's better because the components are all securely mounted to a board, which is then, as you can see, like this one is, screwed down securely with 
uh, spacers and, and uh, lock washers and nuts. Some people will tell you this is better. I kind of prefer this design. Everything is neat and orderly and laid out logically. Um, very little uh, schematic referencing if you're an experienced technician. Um, you know, it, it, these are easy to work with. Um, it is kind of a pain in the ass because if you have to get underneath the board, you have to you have to remove all of the potentiometers as well so you can lift the board up to work on it. But that's a minor consideration. Now that's something that should be addressed here. A lot of people will tell you that these previous versions of Marshall Lamps were better. You can see the horizontal jacks here. If you look at from the front panel, the jacks are horizontal. Later designs had the, the or I'm sorry, this is not horizontal. This is a vertical, I'm sorry. Vertical jacks are the ones everybody wants to say are better. Um, they're mounted with free-floating wires uh, off of the board. And these go to the board and the, and the uh, tube sockets, etc., wherever it is that they need to go. Same with the potentiometers. You'll notice there are wires running to each one. Uh, the presence control has its uh, tone network attached to the pot there. Um, you can see all of the wires that are used there. Okay, And some people will tell you this design is better than the one that came after, in which Marshall took all of these front components and mounted them directly to this board. Now to me, that's a good thing. Okay, and I'll tell you why. Number one, you eliminate all this wire. All of this. All of your wire lengths to these components become shorter. Okay, doesn't matter that all of this is now mounted to the front chassis. Okay, there's always been a danger of damage from vibrational issues. That in itself doesn't really make that much of a difference in terms of durability and construction. Okay. But it takes away that design, that later design, the horizontal jack design, moves all of this stuff up. One thing that it does do for the technician is it makes it much easier to flip the board. All you got to do is remove these six nuts, unscrew everything from the front, pull it back, and it flips over. It just takes a few minutes. Because of all this extra wiring, it makes it a great deal more of a hassle. So I'm just putting that out there really as an opinion, not as a statement of fact, that I feel like eliminating all of this wire could possibly contribute to a cleaner signal overall and certainly affect the tone somewhat. I know players who insist on the horizontal jack amplifiers over the vertical jack amplifiers. You know, everybody's got a preference. Wendy's and McDonald's will both sell you a hamburger, but if you've ever eaten at those places in your lifetime, you could probably tell them apart blindfolded um, and probably have a preference. So there you go. But anyway, back to our original point. This is printed circuit board construction. We started with the magnet tone, which is true point to point. Then we moved on towards the, uh, the first Marshall design, the uh, turret board design which is very much in common with the fender eyelet board design okay and then we've ended up here at the printed circuit board and this is how amps are made today mass produced in general not all of them but the vast majority of fenders PVs um, even Mesa Boogie uses a version of this kind of construction style um, it's cheaper to manufacture um, so that's you know, when you have to make a lot of things and you're trying to make money at it and pay an employee base, you know, cheaper is sometimes better. Again, in my considered opinion, and you can voice your considered opinion if you like, and I appreciate that. I'm, I am very much of the opinion that, like I said, electrons do not care. They don't care if they're moving through a wire or a copper trace or a component lead. They simply don't care. We are trying to deny them access to ground in a controlled fashion. And that's how an amplifier works in a very general sense. So there you go. I just wanted to make a quick little video, kind of up on a soapbox about it. Um, maybe the next time you use the word point to point, you'll think better of it. Because in 90% of the cases in conversations in my shop, where players and other technicians will use the word point to point, they really mean turret board or they really mean eyelet board. Um, point to point is point to point. There is no other 
connections than the components themselves in large part. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this little video. Uh, some of these amps you're going to be seeing in future uh, on further bench reports in the future. Um, but most of them are just here for repairs and, and will be leaving shortly. So uh, that's all I got on this subject for today. Uh, once again, I'm Scooter here at Granville Guitars. If you have any questions about anything we do here, feel free to seek us out on the web at www.granvilleguitars.com. Uh, the best way to contact me directly is to call the shop, frankly. I'm not good with messaging or emails as much as I try to be. The best way is just to call me here at the shop. You get the phone number off the website. So once again, that's www.granvilleguitars.com. You can also find our presence on Facebook and Instagram. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Be good to one another.